Okay, so. Can I put in towel? Sure, you already doing it. So what I'm doing right now is I am, I have a nonprofit organization. And so this has been in the works for a couple years now. I actually started this company back in 2018. So here we are, four years, no, longer than that. Oh my gosh, um, no, let's see. My oldest daughter, she was a baby. Your um, tummy and baby in your tummy. There's no baby in my tummy, no. <laughs> Uh, Cadence was like eight months old when Fearless Money Inc. came about, I believe. I don't know y'all, but it's been a while. So this company has been in the works on and off for a while. And I have decided to do a nonprofit organization to help women like myself who are wives and moms and just needs help. Why? Because at first it's, it's definitely about financial literacy, but it's about helping like married women set a strong financial foundation. Why did it go this way? Because me being a wife and a mom, I have been through the government assistance programs. And when I say that, I mean like food stamps, cash assistance, trying to get childcare. And so here's the thing with that. I find a lot of things wrong with the way the government decides to help certain individuals. And so being married, they don't offer a lot of help. And there are married couples who are genuinely in need of help. And especially financially, like we're a family of seven. We have five kids, two adults. And so we've had times where, you know, financially we just weren't making ends meet. So I was able to get like food stamps very easily. And I'm not saying that, you know, I don't want to stay on this forever, but it has been a great help. And for a while I felt ashamed of being on it. But when I, it, when I was in a position where, you know, I couldn't afford to, f not, not couldn't afford to feed my family, but because I know with all of that, you need to make more money, you need to budget, you need to meal plan, you need, like, these are all the realizations that I've had. And, you know, in my mind, I'm like, I'm not going to be on cat, like, food stamps forever. No, because you, when you're getting food stamps, you got to be making a certain amount of money. You can't be making over this amount of money. And what the government considers um, a lot of money for a family you know, it's not really a lot of money. So for instance, like I've been through the cash assistance program just because I wanted, like we were genuinely in a situation and because I wanted to get access to childcare, get help with paying for childcare because, oh, pretty. <laughs> because there was no way like that we were, like if I was working, I was making enough to just take my kids to daycare. So, and you know, childcare for one child is like $400 a month. <laughs> Um, and now I think two is probably almost that Need another one. A, a week. Need another one. So I knew that I wanted to do something about that because yeah. the process to get cash assistance and what they require you to do, I get some of it, but also like they don't want you to be making no money to get help. It's like they're not trying to really look into your life and see what it really is and say, okay, they can use the help because they are doing this. Both parties are trying to work or have streams of income. And so let's give them this assistance for this amount of time but they require you to be like in real poverty. Like as a family of five or six, you know, you can't make over $2,500 a month. What does $2,500 do for a family of six? That's rent and probably lights and another bill alone for a lot of families. So if you're making over $2,500 a month or if one person in the household has a job you don't qualify for these assistance programs where you can get childcare. Here's another thing I've learned is that you can't qualify for either or. It's like if you, if you wanna get childcare, you have to 
get the cash assistance program meaning like you can't be making no money you can't be doing nothing we just want you to do this job search 40 hours a week until you find a job report to us um and this is the only way you can continue to get this child care and then it's like if one person found a job and then the other person hadn't found a job yet then your child care is just slashed you know and so it puts you back in a predicament where maybe both do want to work outside of the house you know but because one it's just a very interesting program and i feel like there shouldn't be so many impoverished stipulations on being able to have access to assistance with child care and assistance with a little extra money um and so going through these programs um it's, it's just been very interesting and i just feel like you know there should be programs out there that really genuinely want to help married couples build up something strong not just get this four hundred dollars in cash assistance a month this is even when both people in the house are not working they give you four hundred dollars a month to take care of your family of seven when you genuinely need help and then they give you the child care costs like they cover the cost once you find the child care and you are required to be doing job searches 40 hours a week like a job until you get a job and then they take the cash assistance they only give it to you for a certain amount of time once a month and um they only give you the child care for a certain amount of time too so say like when me and my husband went through this program because we really needed it this was back in 20 2019 um my husband found a job i think within a month and as soon as he found a job, they cut the cash assistance. And because he found one, they took the child care too. So people still need this help and people still need access to child care, like help with child care, because child care is a costly thing until you get on your feet. Now, another thing with the government assistance programs that I've realized is that they don't want to support the way that you want to make money. And I think that, like, the way jobs pay is not enough. So they don't count, like, business startup. They don't give you that type of support and help you, like, give you a choice of you start this business and you have to make this amount of money in your business in this amount of time to be able to keep the child care at least. Because starting a business is a job. Like, it requires more than 40 hours a week possibly especially in the beginning so i do feel like there should be things in place where it's like you're choosing to start a business or make this a requirement to get this child care to get this assistance will give you business funds or give you um you know will support you until you're making this amount of money not until you're making this amount of money but you have to make this amount of money or you have this amount of time to make this amount of money, whether it's business income or whether it's through a job. Because when you find these jobs, they don't necessarily support the amount of money that like they don't necessarily provide the amount of money that you need to sustain your household. Now, another thing, too, is like the programs like housing in Section 8. Um that's a even that's another process where like they don't want you to be, you know, they have these, you know, they don't they want you to be a single mom not doing anything barely making any money because when you get section eight you're pretty much getting all of the government assistance too for them to just cover your rent and then you have to go in places that accept that and usually section eight is only accepted in low income areas low income communities impoverished areas like i feel like these programs should if they're going to help you they should also expose you to something different in your life now i'm not using this as a whatever i don't even have to explain it i just feel like these should be stepping stones you know like use them as stepping stones and show that you really be more relational in these government programs and really show that you are supporting families not just single women who want to put their baby daddies on child support because i've been there too where it's like okay i just need help to get on my feet get me a job and i need child care for that too so I didn't put my husband on at one time and they wanted me to put him on child support. And if I, I said no, 
So guess what? I didn't have access to these funds and things like that. So I don't think stuff like that is right because there should be support for families to get on their feet, sustain their children. I think that there should be programs where families can be taken through to set strong foundations and learn financial literacy and learn how to start businesses and just show the value of finding great jobs and gaining Mom, more skills. Mom, I need a bike. No more after that, okay? Um, gaining skills and going back to school and some of these programs are they probably don't have funds or um, I was going to say something else but I lost my train of thought. So this is why, this is just a little bit of why I decided to do this. Okay, you're done. You're done. No more paper. So this is why I decided to start a nonprofit because of these things because I've been there. I've lived it. And even now as a married couple, um, even now as a married couple and a mom who always is home with my kids and starting a business, like I, that support and stuff like that is still needed until I, my businesses grow or, you know, can I get part-time childhood care because I run a business or even if you work from home, I don't think they really sustain you with childcare. And even here in Georgia, there was something I learned new about, this was Florida. So being in Georgia, you know, I found out a little bit about their cash assistance program, their childcare programs. And in Georgia, you have to pay the cash assistance money back. So pretty much they're not assisting you Guaranteeing that you don't have to pay this money back and it's only four hundred dollars a month Huh? Okay You have to pay it back So they're giving you a loan of four hundred dollars One person has to be on unemployment And there were some other things that you had to go through To be able to get on that program. So when I heard that I was like, oh my god they're making you pay this money back. This is supposed to be government assistance. This is supposed to be programs that are meant to help individuals. So not only am I getting on this program and try, like I was getting information not to get on it, but to be able to get this $400 a month for a family of seven and get childcare for uh, my two children that stay at home with me so I can work and my husband, my husband works so I can work too. And I have to pay this money back. So now you're adding debt to my household. You're not helping me. What? So, yeah. So that's why I started Fearless Money Inc. So I said all that to say, like, I'm in the process of um, getting my 501c3. I'm actually in the final stages um, to create programs like that's on another level from what the government is doing and really genuinely support families, especially in the times that we're in right now. Okay, Ren. Um, so <clears throat> I'm in the final steps of the process. I'm so excited because I filed my 501c3 last year in June and I was denied in September, 2021. And then I filed it again, right? I was trying to do the short form of the um, application and I kept answering one of the questions wrong. So then I filed the long form of the 501c3. I filed this in February of this year, 2022. And I just got a response back last month in October. No, except October, Yes, October. We're in November. And so thank God because I almost missed it and I wouldn't have gotten my money back and I would have had to start all over. This was a $600 application. And so now I'm in the final stages of finalizing all of my documents and I will have my 501c3 in January 2023. It's going to be on and popping. So I'm just, I, I have written out some programs. Um, I have teamed up with like a big organization to be able to get help with workshops, like developing workshops and curriculum and getting sponsorship and like, you know, things like that. To set the foundation to just 
help families genuinely who need money, <laughs> who need assistance, who need, and, and married couples are always counted out of this. And I think that's a setup for failure. It shows you that the government does not support marriage, does not support family, but they support single mothers more than anything. They are willing to help a single mom put their father on child support. So I feel like if you are willing to force a single mom to put their father, the children's father on child support, why aren't you willing to help a married couple whose mother and father is there taking care of the babies together? So it just shows you how messed up and corrupt the government system is. Now I'm not like, because the assistant has helped me and my family, but to get further help, I feel like there should be greater support for married couples because you have a family together. Um, so it's just a lot of different things that I've noticed. Like they will put the father on child support and they want you to say yes. So imagine how many women who, you know, just because of bad relationship between the the mother and the father, maybe y'all, they weren't together and got pregnant. And so now this father is just not in the child's life or supporting them in the way that the mom thinks they need to support or the fact that the mom is just in such a place where she needs the daycare and she needs the cash assistance that she says yes to putting a burden such as child support on the father. Now, I'm not saying that that's the case for everybody, but, you know, I know some fathers out there who take care of their children. Now, they messed up and may have had too many children with too many different women, but they do what they can for their children, and the moms still put them on child support. That is such a burden that's not needed. Um, so, yeah. So, so... Here I am. So I'm amending my articles of incorporation and submitting this last paperwork and then I should be good to go. So I'm gonna be updating y'all on that and how my nonprofit situation is going and how it's developing and even when I get approved for my 501c3 and I just wanna start doing the work right now. I wanna be able to offer like, you know, life coaching and business coaching and business support and household support and workshops and things like that for married women and families i mean that's that so i'll keep y'all updated on that